Wandersong is a musical adventure game about a bard going around and trying to solve problems by flipping standard video game conventions on their head and using singing, not fighting or violence, to do this. Many times throughout the game, Wandersong pokes fun at this idea, such as right at the start, by offering the player a sword in a dream. While spinning the sword around, it's quickly clear that violence is not meant for the bard and that he'll have to solve problems in a different way. During this dream encounter, a messenger lets you know that the world, heck, even the whole universe, is ending to pave the way for a new one. But there is a chance to save existence by finding out the Earth Song and singing it to the goddess Aya. But this Earth Song isn't in one piece. A part of the Earth Song has to be discovered in each act from that area's overseer. And to get to that act's overseer, you have to find a song first, usually by solving a problem of that act's town. While that formula sounds simple, the length and complexity of each act grows as the game progresses, and each with its own unique twists. For such a happy looking game, the threat of the end of the universe adds a lot of depth and weight to the story. At a glance, you might think or assume Wonder Song with its music note wheel requires memorization of songs and perfect timing, but it is not about those things. Notes are shown and repeated for you in long sequences, and other times when you have to copy a pattern, it's usually only three notes. Using the note wheel is done with the right analog stick, and the game is surprisingly forgiving when going between notes to smear over ones in the middle. Yes, you can be musically and rhythm challenged like myself and get by just fine as timing when repeating notes never felt too finicky. Overall, it's more up to your liking to try to make the music sound good, as the game doesn't really punish you for that. And each act uses the singing mechanic in at least one new way, especially for platforming. Opposed to leveling up a character and gaining new abilities, the bard interacts with the world in a context-sensitive way primarily. Considering how this isn't a rhythm game, what happens when you make a mistake? If it's repeating a tune, the game simply repeats it and waits for you to figure it out before moving on. There's no penalty. If it's a platforming section, falling to your demise results in a very quick respawn nearby and it's almost always right at the spot where the challenge was, meaning there's very little that has to be redone. Sometimes hitting the gap between the sound wheel can cause a miscue, but with a quick respawn it's never a big issue. Also, I'll add that as soon as I thought, is this game too easy? Almost on cue the game presented me with a tough platforming section. Touché, Wonder Song. The game may look simple in a screenshot, but the presentation of Wonder Song in motion can be wondrous. Flowers, animals, trees, all react to music. There's a ridiculous amount of characters in this game. Every person, with a key exception, moves to a beat. No, that's not a key pun. The camera work for shifting in and out is exceptional for showing off scale. And the cardboard style does lead to some fantastic animation and sequences later on. During the game, I never came across any tough points where I was stuck for too long. Perhaps why I never had to figure anything out is simply the game doing a good job of teaching the basics without me knowing it, and from good hues such as the extra oomph when you hit the correct note. Most puzzles were straightforward, or the game had enough subtle reminders that I wouldn't get off track and forget what to do. One downside of this is that it had few aha, I figured it out moments, aside from one where I had to go a certain way to get to a character. One thing that I found funny is that so many puzzles involved the music wheel, I was thrown off in one that required jumping to the beat instead. However, going back and playing again, I noticed in Chapter 2 there's a moment where the messenger gives a choice to let me figure out something myself, or to request a solid hint. Choices like these add to some replay value of the game, and some may include funny sequences you might have missed on the first go around. As the game progresses, everything escalates and each act grows in size and complexity. There's always something new, and for the most part memorable. The pacing changes through the emotions displayed by the bard via his tune and expressions and the color of the setting he's in. While the bard is happy at first, showing him vulnerable and sad at times also makes him a more relatable character, at least as potentially relatable to a guy who goes singing around the world can be. Usually NPCs have at least three different things to say to you at each point of the game, adding to their backstory and making the game's world a more complete place full of believable inhabitants. Some new characters come back later, but each new act featured loads, sometimes boatloads, of new characters all the time. And not only did I find the dialogue funny, but it's about as addictive to go through as cutting every blade of grass in a Zelda game. The way the characters interact with each other is full of amusing and charming moments, and even with how the bard interacts with the environment and the hazards. There is dancing in the game, but I never figured out if dancing actually unlocked any secrets. 
It's just something that's there that adds to the Bard's character and lets you move around the game in your own way. Rare occasional things that probably weren't intended detracted me from the game slightly. Uh, mostly from a presentation standpoint, and to be clear, nothing major. Things like falling behind scenery as a cutscene started and it wasn't clear if that was supposed to happen, or knowing a platform is there because I reveal it through singing, but an NPC stops me and says he has to reveal the platform. These weren't game breaking, but they only slightly removed me from the experience when they happened. Normally I play games that are more mechanics focused, but Wonder Song's highlight was really the story. Granted, there are a lot of smart design choices that made going for the end of that story a joy. Plus, each act featured funny moments along the way with new twists on gameplay and platforming with the music wheel mechanic. After the adventure was over, I loved Wonder Song, as it was mostly a relaxing game full of details that had me smiling and laughing throughout. And the bard's growth during the adventure contained good life lessons about attitude that perhaps I wish I knew more clearly when I was younger. What do you think about Wonder Song? Let us know in the comments below. And stay tuned to Game Explained for more indies on Switch and other things gaming too.